I'm going to be showing you some things about what we call black body radiation. Now, um, this is going to help us to understand something about stars and how we assume uh, what we assume about stars and what that can actually do for us and tell us. So, first of all, what do we mean by a black body? That is actually defined uh, roughly as you know some object uh, that is a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation, in other words, of light. So a perfect emitter and absorber of radiation. So what we do then is we assume that, um, that stars are like this. Okay, so we're going to say this. So we assume, this is a key thing here, we assume that stars are black bodies. And it turns out this is a very good approximation. Okay, so stars do emit and absorb radiation quite well. So we're going to assume that stars are black bodies. Now what does this mean for us? Well this means, uh, first of all, that when a black body is heated, Okay, so, um, well, it emits light. Now, this light that it emits, um, it's going to be over certain wavelengths. And what we mean by that is, well, let's do an example. Um, something that is hotter than will appear red for example, and something that is uh, even hotter than that might appear a different color. So we're going to be talking actually about this color of something. I mean, you can imagine, for example, a um, example could be a stove can be red hot. Now I think I found a picture of a stove. Let me just see here if I can paste it. Hope this works. Oh, good. Okay, good. So. For example, you know, the oven, let's say you have a, a stove and when it's heated up, it becomes red hot. You might think, ooh, that's really, really hot. But it turns out you can have things that are even hotter than that. So you can have things that are sort of white hot. So we're going to talk about this and this, this concept of color. Okay, so hotter things, they actually, uh, well, they actually sort of behave a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to eventually be doing something called Wien's Displacement Law, but not quite yet. So what I'd like to show you is this then. Um, Maybe I'll just show you this graph then. So four different objects. This is actually what happens now. Um, the light from a star or just from some object that acts like this, this here will be the wavelength. And if I'm graphing that, that's going to be given by the symbol lambda and it's going to be given in meters. Although it could actually be in nanometers, it can be in whatever units you want. So, and over here, this will be some sort of intensity of some kind. So this could be a luminosity or some sort of, you know, this tells you how bright the object is. Now what happens is this. If something is uh, colder, so maybe I'll sort of draw it as a little bit sort of red. So it'll, it'll have some sort of spectrum that's like this. So something like this right here, this might be what we call cooler. So in other words, this might be what we call red hot for example. Whereas if something is actually warmer, maybe it'll be something like uh, this then. So something that's actually warmer might actually have a peak like this. So this is actually a peak that's sort of, it's sort of skewed on the one side over here. But what happens is this one right here, this is hotter. Now there's a reason why I sort of tried to artificially draw these, so one redder and one bluer. And that's because these are here wavelengths. If we look at this right here, maybe this right here represents the wavelength for red. Um, now if that's visible light, let's say it's around 630 nanometers. That might be something that's red. So 630 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. That's what the human eye perceives as pretty red looking. Whereas maybe something over here, maybe that's actually a nice blue. So maybe that's something like uh, 488 nanometers. That might be that would very likely appear blue to someone. Now, you might think, oh, well, that means then that it's really simple then. Um, if something is cooler, then it just appears red, and if something is hotter, it appears blue. But it's not exactly like that, because 
Remember I was saying it emits stars over certain wavelengths. In other words, it emits them over a broad wavelength. So maybe that's important to write down that uh, stars, and actually, well, any black body, um, they have a peak wavelength. So there is some sort of, there is some wavelength value where there's a peak. See this one right here, the peak wavelength is right here. Uh, so maybe I'll draw that, that right there's the peak wavelength. Whereas over here, this peak wavelength is a little bit over here. It's a little bit sort of shifted. So stars have a peak wavelength. So you might think, oh, that's easy then. If it's over here appearing red, then it's going to be a red star. And over here, it's going to be a blue star. But it's not quite the case. Uh, so it has a peak wavelength associated, let's say, with a peak intensity. Uh, that's, I mean, that's the wavelength that gives you the brightest. That's the wavelength where you find it brightest. Uh, so it has a peak intensity, but over a broad range. So in other words, uh, and I'll say of wavelengths. So what I mean by that is, although there's a peak, it still does sort of go out a little bit. And that means that it's a little bit complicated to say what color it's going to appear. Now, um, what's interesting about this is that um, these things right here are, hot, are cooler things, you know, are lower. Hotter things are higher. So maybe that's actually one conclusion we can make here. So hotter means higher intensity or higher peak intensity. But also, look what happened. The hotter it was, it also means um, a lower wavelength. Because if you look at the peak wavelength for this hot thing here, the peak wavelength went lower value. In other words, it was bluer. Whereas over here, it was this way. In other words, uh, if we're drawing it, maybe we can go like this. So this is this peak. It sort of goes that way, and it goes that way, as far as sort of getting hotter. So it moves the peak to the left, and it moves it higher. So hotter means higher peak intensity, but also lower wavelength. And of course, then that means that cooler means well, the opposite. So it means a lower peak intensity. The actual sort of how tall it gets, you know, gets less tall as you get cooler. So something even cooler would be maybe down here. So lower peak intensity, um, but higher wavelength. So this is this property of black bodies that we're going to use. So um, I think it would help to show you a little web page here. What did I have here? There we go. I was just looking for pictures of stoves, of course. Um, this is, again, a nice little animation from PHET. This is this website that I love, love, love. This is the one from the uh, University of Colorado. So you can see the address here, phet.colorado.edu. I highly recommend checking them out because this one right here is a nice little thing that shows us this. This is the intensity in some sort of units. We don't really care too much about the intensity units. And we have a wavelength. In this case, it's in micrometers, but you could easily then say that it's in meters or whatever. So this here is a certain temperature. And as we raise the temperature, look what happens to the graph here. Notice the peak, the peak went from down here to up here, but also the peak goes left to right. So watch as I make it cooler. So you can try to predict. If I bring the temperature down, I can predict that the peak should go down, but it should also move to the right. So let's see if that happens. So as I move it cooler, take a look. So even cooler. This is something that's only at 300 degrees Kelvin. Well, sorry, 3000. It's still hot. And they say here, I mean, compared to a light bulb or the sun or something like that, or an oven. And this actually can explain a little bit about the colors. Now, here they've sort of drawn, okay, these look red, and this is yellow, this is green, this is blue, and this is purple. And of course, we have ultraviolet, we have infrared over here. So something like an oven that I showed you before over here. Let's say we had uh, this oven right here. Now, the reason it appears red hot is because... Well, it may be, let's make it like the temperature of an oven. So maybe something like this right here. Now that's very, very low. We can't even see this peak. We'd have to zoom way in, I'm assuming, that we'd have to really zoom in. I'm not sure if we can even see it. Uh, we can't really see much here going on. But basically this is, um, yeah, that's a very, very low temperature. So but what's really happening then is 
that we have this very, very low temperature, which means we have a low peak intensity. But also, if you look at the peak wavelength, which might be around here, sort of the highest point here, this is way off from what we can detect. So we can't even see this light here. This is invisible to us. This is because it's in the infrared. So if you have a device like infrared goggles, they can see, so to speak, uh, in the infrared, and that tells you about heat. Notice, this is something that's hot. But why then does it look red hot? That's because there's a little trail of it. Look, there's a little bit of it right here that's actually in the red. So because we can see a little bit of it in the red, it appears red hot. It becomes slightly more complicated as we get something hotter and hotter, right? Because as we get over here, what color is this going to appear? That's difficult to say. Because even though the peak might be, the peak wavelength might appear red, you've got lots of light in the green and in the blue and in the yellow, so it becomes a little bit more complicated to predict the temperature. But it is simple to say this, that if something appears red hot, it's not that hot compared to something that's, let's say, yellow hot or something that's, you know, blue or white hot. That means that something is, you know, mega, mega warm, so mega, mega hot. So you notice the peak wavelength goes way, way well, the, the temperature goes, uh, the peak wavelength for the temperature, peak wavelength, sorry, goes to the left, and the intensity goes up higher. Sorry, cat seems to have my tongue today. So if we look at this one right here, then we can try to estimate, oh, look at the sun. The sun's temperature is actually around this. So maybe I can sort of try to zoom down. I'm just changing the scale a little bit just so we can see it. So this is around what the sun does. That's actually somewhat close to the real value for the sun's effective temperature, we call it, or the surface temperature. So then what we're going to do then within black bodies, we're going to define then uh, something about this temperature. See this cooler temperature and this hotter temperature? We're going to have to sort of define something like that. And this temperature is going to be related to these black bodies. And, for example, an oven can tell you something about black bodies. Um, and like I said, or even a candle. If you look carefully at a candle flame, uh, this is a little bit more difficult to see, but if you look at a candle flame really carefully, for example, this is a candle here. The hottest part is going to be at the bottom right here, you know, of the candle. And then sort of it's going to get cooler up here and even cooler up here. So that means these over here are going to appear sort of redder, over here they might appear a little bit yellower, and down here it might actually appear a little bit blue. If you look at a candle very, very carefully, you'll see that the closest will be sort of blue or white hot, then it'll be sort of yellowish, and up at the top will be reddish. So candles, if you look at them carefully, they do actually exhibit this effect. That tells you something about the temperature, that it's hotter here, cooler here, cooler here. Just like your oven, if you can make it even hotter, it'd be, well, it would go sort of whiter. So right now it's a red hot, although we say don't touch it, it's red hot. That actually means it's fairly cool uh, compared to something that's even hotter. It'll appear sort of bluer or whiter. So that's something that we're going to use. And in the next video, I'm going to show you um, how to quantify this. So we're going to start working with this, and we're going to call it Wien's uh, Displacement Law.